Hey folks. So uh, my last video was describing the issues getting with the CM3 base when it's configured for a helicopter, which basically means I have a 200 mil extension, the grip on top. I have the springs tuned uh, pretty much almost completely out. Uh, there are cams present, but they're not actually touching the arms right now because the springs are that wound out. Um, and this is great because you activate the clutches and the stick stays where it is but the problem is is that uh the movement is somewhat uneven um as described in my previous video so um it's decided to try out some now gel um i've got a, a one gram tub of it for a fiver on ebay and one gram is more than enough so uh i'll just run through how i did this now i did take a video earlier on when i um took this thing apart but uh it didn't come out the great greatest the lighting wasn't brilliant and there was some swear words in it so i'll run you through the process for stripping this apart and applying the gel to the clutches okay so first thing you have to do is remove the base plate there are four screws on the bottom just unscrew them and lift the base plate off put it somewhere and the screws safe next off you have to remove this front connector plate here so you take out the four screws in each of the corners and then you pull it directly out and away from the um, the casing. Uh, behind the this steel plate is a tiny plastic um, surround. So you carefully lift and pull it out. Now you need to be careful when you're pulling this connector off. is because there's actually a row of pins behind. And in behind this cavity here is where the actual main PCB is. And these connectors plug directly into a socket in there. So just be careful when you're taking it off. Okay, so that, that deals with that first step. The next one then, you take off these four outer screws. And when you have this off, the entire innards will lift vertically upward and expose the uh, the mechanism. So that's how to get at the, the main guts of it. So, okay, so there are two clutches. This is the, the one that's closest um, when you take it off for, for uh, <laughs> servicing and removal. Now, um, if you'll notice this upper part, this upper arm, there's actually a, a bit of a slot cut into the casing. So it actually sits inside there. So to make it easier to actually get at it, what you do is see these four other screws here. Uh, loosen them about four or five mil out. That means that um, you can put a wee bit of pressure between the top part here i'm sorry that the metal part here the the plate and the rest of the mechanism which means it'll be easier to get this arm out so we'll go through how you disassemble this first one first off you're going to need obviously some tools because you're going to need some allen keys and stuff you're going to need some pliers and an adjustable spanner uh, a socket set wouldn't be bad either i think this is either five or six mil this lad here this is the odd one out uh, this is actually 5.4 mil it's an odd size to have, but I guess that's just what they went for. It's kind of weird. Um, so you're not going to find, I mean, unless it's an imperial thing where it's, I don't know, 14 spider legs or some other retarded shit. Um, you're probably going to have to use an adjustable spanner to get this off. So let's start off with how to, how, to, how to get this off. First off, get your Allen key, insert it through the hole, and then um, put it into this receptacle here. On the far side get a either a socket or a wrench and put it and grip this nut and then start winding the allen key and it'll eventually open this thread out uh, when it gets far enough off then you can just remove this nut and put it somewhere safe and same for this other one here just keep on winding until this comes off so there's a wee spring in the middle here th which the uh, bolt goes through and one, once you've got once you've got this fully, both this and this removed, then this, this side's going to be fully open. Next up, get your adjustable uh, spanner and then remove this bolt. Now, pay attention to the way this is here. There's there's an upper and lower because they're, they obviously go on different sides. So you just remove this bolt. And when you've got the bolt fully out, um, the next thing is to remove the lower arm, which you lift straight out, easy peasy. And then the upper arm, because we've already loosened out these four bolts on the top, we can then put a wee bit of pressure here and move, uh, separate this area out a little bit and then lift that arm out. And that's 
that's the uh, mechanism exposed. Now, between both these arms in the middle is a plastic ring. It has a uh, 45 degree angle cut in it, so there's basically a little gap. Uh, so to get it out, just use your fingers basically and grip both sides and then pull it out. Uh, just pay attention to the orientation. The slit side is over toward this way. Okay, so once once you get the, the plastic ring out, this is where your Nia gel comes in. What you're going to do uh, is get some, and I use roughly about between half and uh, one grain of rice in size. I then got it on the end of a matchstick and then rubbed it on the inside of this plastic ring that has obviously been removed from here. And then smeared um, the dry part of the uh, matchstick around it to remove any excess. Um, I mean, I did put about between half and a grain on and it did take a, a reasonable amount off so I put the thinnest layer possible I could get on the inside of this plastic ring. Now reassembly is pretty much the opposite you put the plastic ring on make sure the slits over to this side here um, get the upper arm put the bolt through it first and then set it in position by wedging this open again and then get it in behind. Get the lower arm ready to go on put the spring on first bring up the lower arm drop it in position and align it with uh, the, the the bolt hole here and these two and then insert that bolt very very loosely and just give it a wee quick turn just to make sure it's in position be careful doing this because you're having to line up a bunch of things here just make sure you get the alignment right on the other side now you then s screw on this square bolt which is retained by this frame um, put it on far enough in to put a wee bit of tension and then put your back bolt on. Your back bolt should have about 2mm of thread uh, showing out the far side when you get this on. This is basically just an end stop. Uh, once you've got that in position then tighten up this bolt here fully, uh, carefully and that is that first cam done. Now the procedure on the other one is just the same but it's slightly different so we'll go and look at it now. We'll just zoom in right so in this in this instance uh, we have this pcb on top of it so you're going to need a star headed screwdriver and very carefully take out these two screws and put the pcb and the cable and lay it over to this right hand side out of the way now this one's a wee bit different because there's not as, there's not, not as much free space around this one there's plenty of free space around this bolt here so with this one what i ended up having to do was use a basically a wrench you couldn't get a socket in there use a wrench to hold it in position and then the same allen key through the top and then wind the allen key backwards until one you take this one off and then two this one comes free uh, on this side it's very similar to this you've got this similar nut on it so yet again just unscrew that nut there's no clearance issues here so you should be able to lift this straight out without having to wet you know do any pressing against this metal top part of the casing and the assembly below. So yet again as before, strip it apart, put the nail gel in the inner ring, and then reassembly is just the opposite procedure. Like I say, this one was a wee bit difficult because there's I couldn't get a socket directly around this, so I had to use what I had in, in, at hand was an adjustable spanner. So same as before, uh, upper arm first with the bolt in, and then get the spring in and then get the lower arm in position put the pin to roughly lock it in position and then put the square bolt thread it through and then the end nut with about like i say about two mil of uh thread showing when it's fully tightened up and then just tighten them all up again and that's you just and the, the uh, reassembly is the same though don't forget to um let's pull back here don't forget to put these four, tighten these four bolts uh, on while you've, you know, you've still got the thing outside the casing to make sure it lines up properly. And then set the mechanism inside, put the four main bolts back in. And then put the outer shroud, plastic shroud around first, then the PCB very carefully. You might want to do this on its side so as you can see the alignment of the pins because the pins are roughly about here behind this plate. Uh, so get the alignment right, very carefully put it in position and then put the four screws to uh, 
put the front plate or the connector plate back on uh, and then obviously if you're actually using the bottom plate i'm not because i'm using the universal base mount uh put your bottom plate back on with the four bolts supplied and that's it um then give it a whirl now i've i've spent about maybe 40 minutes flying with this today after i put the nigel on and um yes there is still a wee bit of the um the fighting you bet happening but it's substantially reduced to be almost barely noticeable unless you're really going for it um once you've got your unit back together uh thing to obviously do is to go to the two um clutch controls and then slowly wind them in uh until you get even force left right and forward and backwards so as it's kind of balanced right you don't you don't like your your X axis being harder than your Y or vice versa, just kind of balance it out. After I got everything together again, I just wiggled the joystick for literally five minutes, going through all the you know the four corners: northeast, uh, northwest, southwest, southeast, basically, and then just wiggled it left, right, forward, and backward a bit, just to kind of work it in. Uh, I adjusted the tension to get enough tension so that it um holds the stick in position and it's really good i have to say it, it's, it's like night and day um in this scenario obviously because i'm using helicopters but the um it feels a whole lot better uh it's it's hard it's hard to put into words but if you've ever used a set of like pedals or something that has like a damper on it it's like it's kind of the same feel it, it almost feels like the thing has a wee bit of mass but it does stay stationary. I mean, it's hard to, it's almost like a hydraulic feel. So yeah, uh, as regards like the amount of uh, nail gel to use, it's up to you. I just put the very thinnest layer I could on. Um, and the one gram of nail gel that I bought, I could probably do about 50 bases with it because you used it the very, very tiniest amount. I mean, I'm serious, like just the very smallest layer on it. You don't want to be going crazy in there. The thing about it is, is when you do put it in then what you do notice is the springs start to have you know more effect but with the um clutch tightened in enough to hold it in position and the weight of the extension and the grip on it it works pretty darn good so uh there you go um if you're having this issue with your cm3 base get some nigel and uh stick it in there hope this helps take care bye